Welcome back, level three. This is the video for the introduction to the filigree assignment. Um, hopefully you were in class and you were able to see the slideshow demonstration as we talked about filigree being the intricate network of negative spaces versus the positive leftover pieces of clay. So this is a bowl example that I made for a semester um, and never was quite able to finish, but you can see how the delicate carving around the um, infinity symbols leaves these empty empty spaces that I can stick my finger through there, but then I've got the positive spaces of the infinity symbols, and that they're all connected for strength and stability. Okay, um, as far as the form for this project, I'm going to leave it fairly open. If you want to throw a bowl form on the wheel, if you want to throw a cylindrical form like this vase on the wheel and use that as the form for your filigree, you can. If you want to slab build something or coil build something, you can do that as well. I'm going to leave the form very open. What you do need is you need to have some kind of pattern. This is just one that I drew up simply, um, that you are then going to repeat. So what I did is I drew this pattern out first, then I taped two long pieces of paper together and simply traced, literally I went over to the window in the ceramics room and traced my design over and over so that I could wrap it around the form of my cylindrical uh, vase here. Okay, so for your planning sheet, on your planning sheet, I gave you spaces to do a little research, find some ideas that you like, make up three different geometric designs, and then on the back I have making up three different organic designs, and then three different combination designs, either combining the organic and geometric for whatever you want. I also made a section for cross, a cross section of three different kinds of forms. So you should have three different kinds of forms that you're experimenting with. Remember, level three is all about experimenting and pushing your boundaries of what you're capable of doing. So after you get your planning sheet done and you've really thought about what you're going to do, you need to start then with the design layout. So you're going to create your form. Here's my pre-created uh, vase style form and then you're going to need to transfer your design I would highly recommend there's I mean there's a million ways to do this of course and as level three students I'm going to leave it open to you doing whatever works for you but I would highly recommend using a needle tool drawing and tracing out your form placing it over your vessel or form so that you can easily poke through the surface. Very similar to our Scrofito design. Notice that on this vase here, I have a line that's right here, I'll zoom it in here, right there, that I did on the wheel. So I held this on the wheel, centered it and spun it around and just held my needle tool steady so that I could get a nice even height of line here and then I did one on the bottom too so that I knew I was getting my design lined up each time. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to hold this paper template right on my design and it's a little hard to do off the video but I'm going to hold it right there and use my needle tool to gently poke my design in. I'm just going to do it really lightly. I'm actually going to be cutting this away, so if I mess up a little bit, I can always go back over. Unlike the um, Scrofito design, if you screw up, you're like savvy enough now as a ceramic artist that you can cover up your mistakes with an extra bit of clay, um, and you can figure that out for yourself. Um, one thing that I recommend is before you start poking this all in, that you really make sure your design is even and laid out. As we talked about in the uh, demonstration, or the introduction rather, we talked about making sure that your design is laid out nicely, that it's symmetrical, um, and that those two things will really help your filigree look nice. Okay? So I've got my dots dotted out there now. You can kind of see that. If you want to, you could trace over it so that it's easier for you to see. Obviously, you don't have to. Um, and I actually don't need that extra line there, but I'm going to do it like this. So you can kind of see where this line is going and where I'm going to cut that away. Okay, now, 
as far as cutting away. Um, I recommend using an X-Acto knife while you're in class. You could use a fettling knife, although it's a little more difficult and challenging. Um, and you'll notice that right here on my filigree, because this is a thrown form, this piece of clay really wants to squish inwards because of the, the torque on the clay. So you have to be really careful that you don't um, start to move your pieces too much. Now, as far as I do this here, I'm just gonna slide this camera a little bit more forward. Let me just move it. Okay, um, and what you're gonna need to do then is simply cut it out. I recommend starting in the center of your design and not going right up to the edge and cutting out, I mean, this all depends on how big of a shape you're working with, but cutting a little bit out and then going closer up to the edge, kind of like coloring as a kindergartner. Um, you know, you wanna make sure you go very carefully next to the edge so that you don't go outside the lines. Cause if you go outside the lines on a thrown form like this, it is kind of hard to get it back. You can, it's possible, but you wanna make sure that you leave yourself an easy cutaway. Now you can cut away all in one piece, uh, which I don't recommend, or you can cut away in smaller pieces, which I do recommend. It's gonna be easier for you to cut out in smaller pieces rather than one huge piece, okay? So kind of taking these little pieces out one little bit at a time. Also, as you do this, um, I have in the room, a bunch of these egg crate foam forms. You can lay your work down on one of these egg crate foams and that sometimes can make life a little bit easier for you. Okay, now if I lay this down, I don't have to necessarily hold it or I can just cradle it with my hand and it's a little bit easier that way. Okay, but with the filigree form, you have to be really careful. The first couple of times you cut is not too bad because there's still quite a bit of your clay form left for stability. But as you get farther and farther into it, like this one here, where you've got so many holes, you have to be really, really careful about how you hold the other side because you don't want to cut through too much and make it so that the walls are going to all start crumbling. And actually, as I'm doing this right now, I'm thinking, man, this leaf form is pretty big, and I'm kind of worried about if I had the the designs too close to each other, that they really would um, compromise the structural integrity of my my actual vase form. Um, but you know, hopefully it works out. Okay, so there's my like flower tulip type design. And one thing that this project really requires you, and this is kind of the time in ceramics where um, we make this a thing, is moisture content. I've talked a lot in the past in your other classes about moisture content and making sure you're aware of moisture content. As you start cutting your filigree out, you're exposing more surface area uh, or more your clay, like you're making more surface area on your clay and therefore it's going to dry out quicker. So you have to be really careful about your moisture content. Um, I would highly recommend not using the moisture bin in class because it's really hard to keep those consistent because they're communal spaces and other people are using them. So I would recommend making sure you wrap this up in a plastic bag and always putting a little bit of moisture back into it, like a wet paper towel or something, um, so that you don't lose that moisture. One of the problems is as soon as it starts to get too dry, then as you're cutting, the clay cracks and then it's frustrating and then you have to repair a crack and by the time you're done repairing the crack, it's not wet enough anymore and it's just, it's a real challenge. So moisture content is key. After this project, you're gonna be a master, a master with moisture content, all right? So you can kind of get the idea. That's how I cut out the first piece. That's how I cut out that um, other piece. And then you're gonna keep going around the circle. And as you can see there, you're gonna to start to be able to see through your form. But you wanna make sure as you do your other pieces here that you are careful and you don't break your overall form. 
with vases or anything, I would suggest leaving the top of the rim solid and the bottom of the foot down here pretty solid so that you don't compromise the integrity of the rim or the base um, and just have your pattern or your design in the middle. If you want to do carving or other things on there as well, that's fine. But the main idea for this assignment is filigree and getting the open quality of those empty spaces set against the solid design of your pattern. Okay, so as you go through, step one, plan your main design, copy that main design into a repeated fashion that you then are gonna transfer onto the body of your work and then cut your work out making sure to be careful with the moisture content. Okay, and that concludes how to work on your filigree assignment for Ceramics 3.